Coming up on today's show, Tesla Model 3 efficiency revealed just before the Model 3 launches, Toyota chases solid-state battery tech for its 22 EV, and the latest Nissan Leaf spy shots suggest we're going to see at least two different battery options at launch. These stories and more coming next on 10. Like all our content, today's show is funded by in-stream ads on today's video and by the kind donations of viewers like you. Follow the link at the end of today's video to make a monthly donation to our Patreon crowdfunding campaign to help keep us independent and impartial. And if you're already donating, thanks for your continued support. It's Friday, July 28th, 2017. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and although today is Model 3 Day, I've decided to push ahead with today's show before the Model 3 reveal event, because if I don't, you won't get a show until late Sunday. That said, I am going to start today's show with the news that just ahead of the Model 3 launch, Tesla has inadvertently revealed the Model 3 will get an energy efficiency of 237 watt-hours per mile. This will make the Tesla Model 3 the most efficient Tesla ever made, and will also put the $35,000 sedan at the top of the energy efficiency charts for electric cars, just ahead of the current charge efficiency champ, the Hyundai Ioniq EV. Of course, with the launch just a few hours away, we'll find out more very soon, and I'll be sure to bring it to you this time next week. We're off to the UK next, which announced this week that it will be joining other European countries in banning the sale of new diesel and petrol cars by 2040, despite its imminent exit from the European Union. But as the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, pointed out this week, the UK's plans aren't enough and aren't quickly enough. Calling for diesel vehicles to be pulled from the streets sooner, Khan said that the UK needs to act now to end air pollution. Meanwhile, our good friend Chelsea Sexton noted that the details in such bans lie behind the ban petrol and diesel by XX headlines, and that those details make all the difference. Without the details, well, it's just soundbite for political gain. Talking of politics, there was a fair amount of myth debunking this week when Fueling US Forward, a mouthpiece of the right-wing conservative billionaire Koch brothers, ran a pro-oil video on YouTube called Dirty Secrets of Electric Cars. The video made all kinds of rather old hat and incorrect claims about electric vehicle batteries, how they're made and what happens to them, and caused quite a stir among EV advocates. But given the video has received about half as many views on YouTube as last week's 10, I'm hopeful that, just like outrageous claims made by the White House this week about transgender healthcare costs that justify President Trump's ban on trans soldiers serving in the US military, these anti-EV myths are already well and truly busted. This week, the state of California's Air Resource Board gave Volkswagen the green light to begin installing the electric vehicle charging infrastructure it's been compelled to do as part of its massive Dieselgate court settlement. After some debate at the California Air Resource Board as to if Volkswagen's proposed infrastructure plan would disadvantage EV charging access for lower income families, Carb voted unanimously in favor of allowing Volkswagen to continue with its $800 million plan to install charging infrastructure across the state, with 35% of those funds due to be spent in lower income, disadvantaged areas. Chevrolet's first plug-in car since the EV1, the Chevrolet Volt Range Extended Electric Car, is now approaching its eighth year of production and, in that time, has enjoyed reasonably healthy sales figures, for a plug-in at least, across its two generations. But this week, we heard rumors that due to a massive slowdown in the number of cars it's selling, parent company General Motors is considering ditching the Volt, along with several other lower-volume cars around 2020, as a way of streamlining its family. In its place, a hybrid crossover SUV, which should certainly appeal to more buyers than the Volt. Will it plug in? Will it happen? Well, that's not been confirmed yet, but GM is certainly examining the possibility, with the Volt's gasoline-electric replacement coming in 2022. Watch this space. Ever since the days of the EV1, the original RAV4 EV, and other contemporaneous nickel metal hydride plug-in cars like the Ford Ranger EV and Chevy S10 EV pickup, a small company in California known as BatteryMD has offered battery diagnostic and replacement services for nickel metal hydride cars. But with less than 300 of the original RAV4 EVs on the road, two of them of course on the Transport Evolved fleet, BatteryMD's services are less in demand than they once were. 
Combined with the costs of maintaining, monitoring, and reconditioning these original battery packs, Battery MD has announced this week that it will stop offering replacement battery pack services as of August 8th this year. And while there are other places to get RAV4 EV battery packs, if you've got one, you may want to reach out for them if you want Battery MD to be the place to fit that remanufactured pack. This week may be the week of the Model 3 launch, but it's also been the week where two other electric vehicles have been unveiled to the public for the very first time. The first of these is the Bollinger B1 electric SUV, which received its official unveiling in New York midweek. Looking like a cross between the iconic Land Rover Defender and an old school Jeep, the B1 boasts an all electric range of 200 plus miles. That's 321 kilometers, and will say its creators come with a choice of 60 kilowatt hour or 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, as well as level 2 and DC quick charging as standard. Designed as a class 3 vehicle, it'll also be able to pack a punch with an impressive load and towing capability. Oh, and it has a neat trick you can pass large items all the way through the cab from frunk to rear. Pricing and launch date will be confirmed, but I want to put this thing through its paces soon. A Bollinger, if you're listening, call me. The other EV to get its reveal this week is the Sono Scion, a five-seat hatchback from Germany that its creators say will include solar panels, two-way power transfer, and a whole host of onboard features designed to make it ideal for car sharing and ride sharing services. If you haven't heard of Sono before, that's because the company is relatively new, thanks to its beginnings in the crowdfunding world to begin an everyday electric car that was affordable, practical, and desirable. There's no cemented production date yet, but Sono says the Scion will retail from $18,000 before battery. Given how much trouble small startups have had in the electric car marketplace, though, I'm unconvinced either the Scion or the B1 will make it to production. I hope I'm wrong. Ever since the days of Sir Alec Isagonis, the Crowley production facility in Oxfordshire, England, has played a pivotal role in the production of the Mini, manufacturing mini-badged cars from the original Morris Mini Minor all the way up to the modern Mini Cooper. And this week, BMW confirmed that the Crowley plant will soon become home to the all-new Mini E2, the second car to wear the Mini E badge, and the first mass-produced all-electric Mini you'll be able to buy outright. Production will begin there in 2019, so expect a production Mini E reveal sometime next year. By now, you probably all know that Toyota has something of a love-hate relationship with electric cars, openly seemingly to focus on hydrogen fuel cell technology rather than battery electric technology. But this week, we heard that Toyota is working on a brand new plug-in car for launch by 2022, which will feature a solid-state battery pack. Unlike a conventional modern electric car battery pack, which uses a liquid electrolyte inside the battery, solid-state batteries use a solid electrolyte. Current solid-state battery technology isn't quite ready for prime time yet, but recent breakthroughs have yielded battery packs that are more energy dense, can store more energy per unit volume, and recharge far faster than current battery tech. It's also unclear right now if Toyota has invested in solid-state battery technology, but if it has and it manages to bring this car to market, things could get very interesting indeed. With all the attention focused on Model 3 this week, you may have missed the news that Tesla has made some quiet changes to the Model S and Model X, including announcing the removal of the Model S 75 and making only dual-motor Model S cars from now on, replacing the 75 kilowatt hour battery pack with a software-locked 85 kilowatt hour pack on entry-level cars, and adding premium lighting and air suspension as standard on all Model S and Model X. Gone too are leather seats, replaced by a vegan-friendly premium synthetic leather, a switch which should earn Tesla some extra brownie points from vegan and vegetarian customers and those concerned with the carbon footprint of farming leather. There are also a few other tweaks to packages too, so follow the show note link to find out more. After the Model 3 launches, the next big plug-in car to hit the market will be the next generation Nissan LEAF, which is due to get its unveiling in just over one month's time. And this week, we got some spy shots from France, courtesy of Nicolas Dufresne, showing a prototype next-gen Nissan LEAF's dashboard, showing a 99% state of charge and an indicated range of 256 kilometers, which is about 156 miles. This, I think, indicates that Nissan is preparing both a 40 kilowatt hour LEAF for market this year, as well as a 60 kilowatt hour LEAF, meaning the next-gen LEAF could undercut the Chevy Bolt EV and Tesla Model 3 
three if you're willing to get a hit in range over its two closest rivals. Given 150 kilowatt DC quick charging will be standard, as well as level two charging, I think this could be a good choice for those who really don't have a bladder that will survive much longer than 135 miles on a road trip. Like me, for example. And finally, over the past few years, we've seen the fossil fuel industry slowly come to that oh bugger moment, as it realizes that electric cars are not only here to stay, but taking away some of their petrol and diesel customers too. Well, this week we saw the ultimate evolution of that when Shell CEO Ben Van Burden told Bloomberg during a live interview on air that his next car will be electrified. Admittedly, he's going for the Mercedes-Benz 550e, which is a plug-in hybrid. But given the company has begun installing charging stations at filling stations across Europe, I think Shell realizes that the writing's on the wall for fossil fuels. And that's a very big tipping point indeed. And on that good note, it's time for me to say goodbye for the week. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit that notification button to make sure you don't miss an episode. And if you like what I'm doing, why not contribute to the show's costs via Patreon? I've left a link at the end of this video and in the description below. And that funds new studio equipment, like the new camera I'm using this week. Thanks. As always, I'll be back next week with more cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation news. But until then, thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. That was 10. Have a great weekend and until next time, keep evolving.